Howdy gamers, it's your angry D&D floor goblin here to tell you why I don't like saving throws. You know, the things you roll when you nearly fall off a cliff, or when a spell tries to muddle your mind, or when a ghost tries to possess you. Yeah, hold on to your charisma, cause it's gonna get weird. I don't wanna be divisive today. Okay, Subversive Jacob is gone. I am now Predictable Jacob. Being able to backflip out of a fireball is dumb, and I'm gonna explain why. Why isn't the video starting? Oh yeah, Questonomicon. Guys, my Kickstarter just launched! If you want a compendium of one-shots with varying themes like western, horror, seafaring, that each have a villain that changes the adventure, and tips for GMs on how to run games, and actually just kidding, the one-shots can be extended out to two or three shots, but you could end the adventure at any time if you wanted to because they have open or closed endings, allowing you to Virtually do whatever you want with these games. And check out the Quest Anomicon in the description. We went live on Kickstarter last week. We got funded in 15 minutes. Oh my god, thank you guys so much. That is insane. And um, it, it, along with the book, there's also, uh, you know, a magnetic DM screen. Maybe you want one of those. Or some dice. Or some miniatures. Or some maps. Or some pawns. Or a special edition. You, you go you you go check that out. Why don't you why don't you just go down there and check that out? Okay. Saving throws. Okay, so I went to Twitter to ask you guys about what you thought about saving throws and Ah! The main consensus I gathered was about two different opinions. One being, I like saving throws. I just wish the other abilities were used more often. That's because wisdom and dex are used a lot more than the other. Or, I do not like them. Why aren't they just ability checks? Please bring back fortitude, reflex, and will. And then Arsqueef said, if you like them, then you probably pee with your pants down at the urinal, and I would have to agree with him. I think saving throws in the context of a reactive ability is fine. Like when you touch a hot stove and you instinctively pull your hand back in reaction. It's like instincts, that's kind of what saving throws are. Or when the doctor hits your knee with a hammer and your leg goes whoop, that's kind of like a deck save because it's like reflexes. The idea behind these abilities is fine, I think it makes perfect sense, but just because something makes sense in the game doesn't mean it has to exist. We don't narrate when our characters go to the bathroom because it's simply assumed. We don't go into detail about how a character would grow more and more tired through a combat because that would probably bog down a lot of the game. And going to sleep for eight hours, or four if you are of elven descent, closes open wounds. We're already willing to suspend our disbelief for this game, so I don't agree with the argument that saving throws are a necessity. It can change like anything in D&D. I don't think that when D&D was being designed, they were like, hey, we should have a mechanic for reflexes. I think that it was more of, hmm, there should be a way that you can take less damage from a fireball. And the answer was saving throws. I think you need a balance of, is this realistic or is this fun? Just because something is wholly realistic doesn't mean it needs to be in your game. And the same goes for fun. And fun is completely relative to you, your friends, and your group, and whoever's playing in your game. So if you don't think that what I'm about to say is fun, then you can just feel free to call me a dummy dum dum in the comments. But in my opinion, saving throws make for a really lame narrative and undermine player actions and agency as a whole. I find D&D extremely fun when we get to make decisions that can change or affect the outcome of the game. And the more dangerous and riskier those decisions, the better. I like difficult enemies in combat because they make everybody think about all of their abilities, their movement, and who they're going to help or hurt. I like high stakes. Any character can make a decision that will have rippling effects that will change the game. I like cursed magic items. I can have a plus two to AC, but at what cost? I just really like give and take. The player gets and the player takes, and thus the DM gives and takes, and it's a relationship where both are having fun. Because the DM is a player too, and the DM should also be having fun. I am not a fan of wishy-washy games with invincible player characters and no sense of urgency. But if you do, then you just have a darn time with that. But hey, if you want to play Stardew Valley D&D, then go for it. It's just not my cup of tea. What are you doing here?
So, you know there is urgency in Stardew Valley, right? Like There is? Yeah. You have to farm your crops and have them ready by the end of the season. You gotta, up, you gotta upgrade the community center for the people of the town. You know, and some, some people like to challenge themselves and do it in their first year. And like, maybe even get married to your favorite villager. But there's no, like, sense of danger in Stardew Valley. There's the mines. What you need to get into and fight off creatures to... But the creatures aren't, like, that difficult. Yes, they are. Okay, but there's no negative for you dying, is there? Yes, there is. You have to pay a fee to Harvey. Because if you die in the mines, you get pretty hurt. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, If you like Animal Crossing D&D then you go for it. That's just not my cup of tea. Well, I, okay, Animal Crossing has bees, which are an enemy that grant you a negative. Yeah. There's also the risk of time. There's there's urgency happening with the fact that time is consistently moving and you have to accomplish certain goals in a certain order. And there's the risk of not being able to catch certain types of creature. There's urgency everywhere. Every game. Okay, maybe maybe you just need urgency and a uh, risk to uh, play a good game. Okay, going back to saving throws. Saving throws take away from player agency because when a dragon breathes its fire breath onto me, I don't get to make a conscious decision. I'm just forced into whether I want to dodge or not. Because, yeah, I guess you could forego the save. Which, you know, irks me because saving throws force you into this decision. And also, make no sense, if a dragon has been smart enough to corner a character and breathe fire onto them, they could just magically not take any of the damage. Whenever I roll a saving throw, I feel like a baby and my my widow hand is being held through the game like, Okay, Jacob, the intellect devourer is going to take your brain. And I'm like, oh no, can I have one chance for that not to happen, please? I chose to fight the intellect devourer. There should be consequences for me fighting an intellect devourer. Forcing players into a choice is not a choice. It's a non-choice. It's a non-choice choice. <laughs> However, I still think that saving throws should still exist, but they should only be used sparingly. One main example is traps. Traps are the only time that I feel like a deck save is extremely appropriate. But I think that the DCs should be really high. Like you step on a pressure plate and a spear flies at you. And if you roll an 18, you dodge it. But when it comes to everything else, and I'll use spells as my example. Saving throws should really only be used for trap-like spells. I think fireball should like telegraph instead of just a deck save. The wizard picks an area and then at the start of his next turn, that's when the fireball explodes. And everybody in that area has to either move or try to save somebody else or try to find cover or stay in the fireball and take the damage because maybe it's an advantageous position to be in. That is just infinitely more interesting than Ah, oh good, I didn't take that fireball damage. I love being a rogue. The same goes for mind-affecting spells. Illusion is already so underutilized and underrated because of saving throws. Like, I create the epitome of your fear in your mind, and you're just like, <laughs> no. I think what would be cool and kind of fun is for some spells, if it was more the spellcaster's ability modifier versus the target's wisdom score. So it'd be kind of like a Jedi mind trick, where more clever characters are always going to succeed, while not as wise characters will always fail, depending on the power level of the caster. That can also create some really annoying scenarios where just suggestion always works on a certain character and that can be kind of dumb. But that's why I think ability score improvements and feats are so important because eventually your character could learn to overcome them. But I also think it would be such a fun weakness to have as a character instead of just, uh, sometimes I fail more often than everybody else. Like there are some seriously cool spells in the book that do amazing things, but they're never ever used because how many freaking times have you casted a spell and the saving throw succeeded? It's just like, well, this is useless. <laughs>
I really like how Blades in the Dark utilizes a stress mechanic to where you can use stress to create flashbacks and succeed scenarios. I think that'd be really fun for D&D if you had a stat with like a point system, maybe it was like wisdom, and you could subtract these points in order to succeed against certain spells, but eventually you would grow weaker as the game went on. And maybe if you wanted to save them on smaller spells, then you could, but those smaller spells would get off more often. So a bad guy casts suggestion on a character and they're just like, I don't want to waste my points for this, so I'll just do the suggestion. Like that's, you, you get to make a choice that's so much more interesting and fun. You could even have feats or abilities that increase these wisdom points or have spells that can deplete them easier. I don't know, I just think that would be so much more fun than just rolling saves and you never know if a spell's gonna work or not. <laughs> And as a DM, it's really frustrating too when you want to challenge your players with like a really powerful wizard or lich, but their saving throws are just constantly succeeding. So they just go, ah, oh, we have such good luck today. And it's like, oh good, you won because of luck, not because of any choices that you decided to make. I don't know, I just think it'd be more rewarding. Choices are fun. I like, I like choices. I don't know. Okay, this is the end of the video. I'm, I'm, I'm done.